Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Celine Freeman, Teton Raptor Center's veterinarian, and I will be taking you through this week's patient update. As Caroline, our rehabilitation intern, mentioned last week, we are currently at capacity with patients, which means that we are very busy with patient care. So I will only be able to go through a few patients today. Because I'm a veterinarian and I love diagnostics, and they're so integral to our process of diagnosis and treatment plans, we will be going through lots of diagnostics today. For every admitted patient, we perform full body x-rays to evaluate for skeletal issues and internal trauma, as well as performing fecal floats to look for intestinal parasites. We also look at blood work to determine patient systemic and internal health. So let's go ahead and get started. Our first patient for this week's update is Swainson's Hawk 8124. This patient presented to us from Victor, Idaho for torticollis. Torticollis is a fancy word for saying that they have a head tilt. Head tilts can be secondary to ear infections, head trauma, systemic organ dysfunction, toxin ingestion, infections, and many other reasons. Because I was unable to get a photo of this patient this week, I've included a photo of a red tail hawk with a non-pathologic head tilt, which is similar to what our Swainson's hawk looks like. While most of our patients are admitted secondary to trauma, we believe this patient may have experienced head trauma, possibly to, due to a collision. Additionally, while performing a fecal float on this patient, we noticed a significant infection with an intestinal parasite known as coccidia. This image shows what the parasite looks like under a microscope. Coccidia infect the large intestines in birds causing major malabsorption and maldigestive issues. So much so that we can see neurologic signs such as head tilt due to the major electrolyte abnormalities. While we are unlikely to truly know whether this patient suffered neurologic signs from head trauma or a coccidia infection, or even both, we are treating and this patient is improving significantly and will be ready for release after they finish their treatment. Our next patient is Swainson's Hawk 8624. This patient presented to us from Rigby, Idaho with suspect left eye trauma, which has resolved since admission into our hospital. Radiographs were clear for any skeletal issues or salomic organ abnormalities. So our next diagnostic test was evaluating their blood work. Blood work showed a bloodborne parasite specifically called leukocytosoin. This image is taken on the highest magnification on the microscope. The ovoid pink cells with the dark purple oval inside of those cells are normal avian red blood cells. The red arrow is pointing to the parasite, which has a peculiar elongated shape when it infects white blood cells. This bloodborne parasite attacks white blood cells of birds, which in turn suppresses their immune system and is typically transmitted by biting insects. This patient is currently doing much better clinically and is undergoing treatment. We will recheck blood work this week, and if the parasite is absent, we will release this patient soon. Next patient up is Long-Eared Owl 8-10-2024. This patient presented to us from Fairview, Wyoming, with its right wing in a strange orientation. Upon arriving to the hospital, its right wing was upside down, making us very suspicious for a fracture. We performed x-rays where we found a right humeral fracture, which you can see with a red circle. Because the wing was rotated in an abnormal position, the fracture needed to be manually reduced under general anesthesia. Manual reduction means that I pulled the two ends of the bone apart and put them together in a normal anatomic position to reduce additional damage and discomfort. This patient is currently scheduled for orthopedic surgery this week and is currently being managed with pain medications and supportive care. We are hopeful for a successful release. Our last patient of the week is Redtail Hawk 7124B. This patient presented from Idaho Falls, Idaho, and this patient had a hairline right ulnar fracture noted by the arrows in this x-ray. This x-ray was actually taken about two weeks ago, showing significant callus formation, meaning that the bone is healing and stable. As you can see in this video, this patient is flying well in our flight barn and will be ready for release very soon. That is all that I have time for for patient updates this week, so thank you all so much for tuning in today. If you'd like to support Teton Raptor Center, please go to our website at tetonraptorcenter.org, or you can click the link below to donate directly. Feel free to comment below with any questions that you may have about any of these cases, and I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks again.